I mean, you can't get impatient doing this. You can't get frustrated doing this. You can't get resentful doing this. You can't force it or control it doing it. I've seen what happens in the brain. I used to say genes create disease. Lie. It's an absolute lie. There's a very small percentage. About 5 to 1% of the people on the planet are born with a true genetic condition like type 1 diabetes. The other 95 to 99% is created from lifestyle or behaviors. The two identical twins sharing the same genome. One dies at 52, the other one dies at 88. Well, what, what happened there? It was the reaction to the environment that caused their genes to be switched on or upregulated to make a healthy protein or downregulated to make a cheaper protein. And, and it turns out that when you're living in stress and living in survival, you're living in emergency mode, and that's not a time for growth and repair. Yeah. Well, that's a time to, to mobilize all the body's energy, all its resources from some endangered situation, real or imagined in their life. So if you're living in emergency mode for an extended period of time, and you keep signaling that gene, well, my goodness, it makes sense then that over time, the gene's gonna begin to wear out, just like, like taking a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Sooner or later, you're gonna start making a cheaper protein. So the expression of proteins literally is the expression of life. So then, is it possible then to signal the gene ahead of the environment? The answer is absolutely yes. Because if a person's waiting for their wealth to feel abundance, if they're waiting for their health to feel wholeness and gratitude, if they're, if they're waiting for their new relationship to feel love, they're living by the old model of reality of cause and effect. Waiting for something out there to change to make them feel better and here, take away their lack or emptiness. But the moment the person embraces the emotion ahead of the event, if they understood what they were doing and why they were doing it, then if the environment signals the gene, and it does, and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion, when you embrace the emotion ahead of the experience, you're signaling the gene ahead of the environment. And if genes make proteins, and proteins are responsible for the structure and function of your body, you begin to become that very person. So it's not our wealth, it's not our health, it's not our new relationships, it's not the things we accumulate, it's who we become. Yeah. So we overcome the old self, which takes a great act of will and awareness, and we become somebody else. So then when you become it, nobody can take that away from you. In fact, you know that you know how to do it, or you know that you know that you are it. And an abundant person doesn't say, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, I'm abundant, or a healthy person doesn't say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. They don't say that, they are it. Yeah. So then most people have just been fooled by their senses because they're 5% of their conscious mind is holding the intent, but their body is habituated into a predictable future or emotionally conditioned into the past. And they're, and they're saying, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, or I'm, or I'm happy, I'm happy. And the body's going, you're miserable. You're unhappy. You're, that, that thought can't even make it past the brainstem to the body. So then teaching people how to self-regulate they have no idea when they start changing their emotional states, the amount of biological and energetic changes that take place within them and all around them. So then develop that skill and get really good at this. Then for the most part, you wouldn't be so interested in, in so many material things. You would be interested in facing off with yourself every day and asking, what is it? that stands in the way between me and my future? What is it that stands in the way between me and my connection to the quantum field? That, that's, I think that's the real question. This is an unlearning process. I mean, I mean, Watson and Crick, you know, telling people that genes are the, genes are a library of possibilities. So we express one and a half percent of our DNA, the other, 98.5% is called junk DNA, and, and that 1.5%, that's 23,688 genes we express. We have 140,000 proteins that make up the physical body. How could you have more proteins than genes? It should be one to one, because on one gene, you can have thousands of variations, depending on the signal. So I hypothesize that that other 98.5% has to be signaled by electromagnetism. That the receptor sites on the outside of the cells are, are 
hundreds of times more sensitive to energy or electromagnetism than the art of chemistry. Chemistry is a downward causation. So imagine the person elevating their energetic state. Well, they are going to literally select and instruct new genes, and, and those genes may, may be the ones that create more significant and faster changes in the body. I mean, how do you explain a person in one meditation that's blind that comes out as now seen? Like, what happened there? What about the stroke patient who, who, who was paralyzed for years is now moving a limb? I mean, that's, it's, it, it's, it's not matter that emits a field. That's an illusion. It's the field that creates matter. So then the fundamental question is, if you change the field, will you change matter? It's none of your business to change the tumor. <laughs> the, the, that's the that's the outcropping that's the out picturing of changing the pattern in the field so getting people really good at this and the closer they can connect to that unified field the more they are their consciousness is connected to that consciousness the shorter amount of time it'll take i mean i believe i'm an eternal being i believe i'm eternal and in fact all religions that you study always talk about e you're, you're going to be around for eternity, whether it's heaven or hell, <laughs> whether it's karma or whatever, nirvana, you are going, consciousness is going to exist. So you're going to be stuck with yourself for a very long time, <laughs> which then asks, begs the question, well, if I'm waking up now and have this healthy body and this charisma and successful, my goodness, I'm going to use the same passion that the life that I've created with those great habits, and I'm going to turn it inward, and I'm going to bloom like a flower in a new way. Because, hey, someone did it at 33 years old. You're 38. Mm -hmm. So what? There are people in this, in this group that we're about ready to do that are in their 80s, and they could be home watching Wheel of Fortune, and they're all in. And you can't tell me you're too old. To do this work, we have people in their 80s and a, a few in their 90s. I've seen their brain scans, and they know how to do it. And you know what? They're happy. You can't, you can't tell me you're too sick to do this work any longer. We have really, really sick people that have reversed very serious health conditions and even genetic disorders that there were no solutions for in medical science. And there were days that they doubted themselves. And there were days that they didn't feel like doing their meditations. And there were days they were in so much fear because the doctors told them they were stupid and they were going to die. And there were days they could have excused themselves and said, I have too much going on, I'm too busy. And they could have excused themselves and not done the work. But guess what? They did it anyway. They overcame the conditions in their environment. They overcame their beliefs. They overcame those programs, the conditioning. They overcame their body. They overcame their fear. Their, their love for life started to become greater than their fear of death. That's just because they made the effort to turn the battleship around. And, and you can't even tell me that you're too overweight or too underweight or too out of shape. I've seen it on all shapes and sizes. You can't even tell me that, you, that you're, you never meditated before. In fact, many times people who have never meditated before have the most profound readings because they're not trying to do anything or expect to do anything or <laughs> doing it their way they're just following what what you tell them to do and in their innocence they run right into something really big so 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 what at 38 years old practicing this you could say then my new goal is to live for 150 years <laughs> in a body that's 38 or 48 and we're measuring telomeres we have people Many people, their biological age is way different than their chronological age. They don't care that they're 38. Their body tells them they're 28. And, and why? Because they're working with down-regulating genes for disease and up-regulating genes for health every day. Why? Because they understand that they can. And if you don't understand that you can and you're ignorant, then it doesn't work. So then... So then People who actually say, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to, become, I'm going to become the scientist with my life. I'm going to measure the effects of me at cost. That's how I live. I say, all right, I'm going to change my energy. I, I can tell you, nobody changes. In all the years I've been doing this, nobody changes until they change their energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life. And why not every day instead of getting up and searching for your cell phone? 86% of the people that have a smartphone 
the first thing they do when they wake up is they do their WhatsApp, their text, their Facebook. They take a picture of their feet. They post it on Facebook. Then they do their Instagram, you know, take a picture of their cat, you know, and then they link in and they check one email, the other email, they check the news. And now they're their they're, they're attention on and everything known in their life. They reaffirm their identity. And then they go through all those routine behaviors. 95% of them, they're not even present and conscious of them. There's just a group of them. Or they're, they're remembering their problems in their past. That's how they start their day. And, and don't expect anything in your life to change if your environment is controlling your feelings and thoughts. And if your environment is controlling how you feel and think, and I say to you, Aubrey, why are you so upset today? Oh, well, this person is upsetting me. What you're really saying is that person is controlling your feelings and your thoughts. And that means you're a victim to your environment. Well, to turn that around and you start realizing your feelings and thoughts create your environment, <laughs> and you start seeing the effects of you at cause, you're going to react less to the people in your life because you're going to understand that you'll be back to the victim consciousness. And, and when you start seeing that you're creating outcomes in your life, you're going to believe more that you're the creator of your life and less the victim of your life. And I say, the more you practice it, the better you get at it. There is a new consciousness emerging. There's something happening where people are latching on to their own empowerment, latching on to their own unlimitedness. And it's becoming very contagious. So the person, you know, I, I used to golf a lot with my friends and I, I used to say to them, I mean, I'm a decent golfer, but I'd say to them, I'm just not good enough to get upset. Just, I'm really not, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun mm -hmm. and, and I'm gonna play. And the more fun I have, the better I play. I watch, you know, you, you duff a shot and then you start getting angry and frustrated. It's the same thing. Yeah. That's your game is going to you're going to you're going to make the same mistake on the next swing because your emotion is keeping you in your past. Mm -hmm. So you got to make a choice to self-regulate or not. And the ones that get right back on that have ice water in their veins that can settle down and refocus again. Yeah, those are the ones that execute really well. So the person who can't get beyond themselves is just a matter of practicing how many balls do you have to hit? How many punches do you have to throw? How many kicks do you have to throw? Till all of a sudden you start looking forward to doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I can tell you this because I've been doing it for a very long time. Some days are easier than others. But I'm not going to give up. I'm just not. I mean, if I'm going to carve out some time, then I'm all in. I'm not, I'm not going to shut my cell phone off. I'm going to disconnect from it. It's all going to be there when I get back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my inner world more real than my outer world. And step by step. I mean, you can't get impatient doing this. You can't get frustrated doing this. You can't get resentful doing this. You can't force it or control it doing it. I've seen what happens in the brain. You're going to make your brain worse. So sooner or later you start figuring out that isn't it. And all of a sudden you start following the instructions. And you start going, wow, that was really easy. What was I doing up to this point? Everything but the formula. You were doing everything else but the formula, doing it your way, mm -hmm. analytical mind telling you to quit, it's too hard, you'll never get it. Yeah, those are the exact things that are standing in the way between you and your future. And every time you become conscious that you do that and you settle back down, that's a victory. Every time your body wants to get up and check an email or check the cell phone or check, get up and get a cup of coffee and you settle it down, you're telling the body it's no longer the mind, that you're the mind. Every time it wants to go back to the past and romance some trauma just to reaffirm some emotional state and you become conscious of that and you say where I place my attention is where I place my energy and I'm siphoning energy out of the present moment into the past and you become conscious of it and return back to the present moment, that's a victory. And every time you start thinking about the staff meeting at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and that's the known and you stop and you return back to the present moment, you're disinvesting your attention and energy out of that future and you're making room for the unknown in your life and that's a victory.